repeal the income tax before you impose a new tax, isn't there a danger with your 999 plan with these three taxes that some government down the road after President Kane is going to increase three forms of taxation on Americans? No, there's no danger in that. And first, let me answer Dave's question with the 999 plan. Unfortunately, nobody up here answered his question. He wanted to know as a small businessman, what are we going to do in order to help him as a small business person? I have walked in Dave's shoes. This economy is on life support. That's why my 999 plan is a bold solution. It starts with throw out the current tax code and pass the 9% 9% business flat tax, the 9% personal, personal income tax, and the 9% national sales tax. This is the most important part. It eliminates or replaces corporate income tax, personal income tax, capital gains tax, as well as the, as well as the estate tax. The, then it treats all businesses the same. And the people who are paying only payroll tax, 15.3, that 15.3 they don't have to pay, now they only have to pay that 9%. And unlike Governor Romney's plan, my plan throws out the old one, he's still hooked to the current tax code, that dog won't hunt. If your name is mentioned in an answer, you get 30 seconds to respond. Governor Romney. Uh, that's fine. I, I put my plan out. I want to make it very clear that my intent is to help the people who've been most hurt by President Obama's economy. And the people who've been most hurt are the middle-income families of America. And that's why my plan says that if middle-income families want to save their money, anybody earning under $200,000, and not pay any taxes on interest, dividends, or capital gains. Zero tax on their savings. That's the plan I'm for, and I'll get that done in my first year. Thank you. Congressman Paul, I want to show you the video that got the most votes of all the video questions submitted to YouTube. And this one comes, as you can see, from Brandy and Michael in Spencer, Indiana. There's growing concern among Americans about the size and the scope of the federal government and its infringement upon state and individual rights. If you're elected president, how do you plan to restore the Tenth Amendment, hold the federal government only to those enumerated powers in the Constitution, and allow states to govern themselves? Congressman, what's your answer for Brandy and Michael? Well, obviously it would take more than one individual, but the responsibility of the president would be to veto every single bill that violates the Tenth Amendment. That would be the solution. Anything else, sir? you got a little time left. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, that is the subject that is crucial because government is too big in Washington, D.C. It's run away. We have no controls of spending, taxes, regulations, no control on the Federal Reserve printing money. So if we want government, it, whether it's medical care or whatever, it's proper to do it at the local level as well as our schools. But there is no authority in the Constitution to do so much of what we're doing. There's no authority for them to run our schools, no authority to control our economy, and no authority. No authority to control us as individuals on what we do with our personal lives. Thank you, Congressman. Well, okay. We got to the full answer there at the end. Governor Johnson, same question to you about the Tenth Amendment. With this added, you are an outspoken libertarian. What makes you a better choice for libertarian Republicans than Congressman Paul? Uh, I'm not going to presume to make that assumption, but I would like to say that I do bring a unique perspective to this stage. I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974 and grew it to over a thousand employees. I have run for two political offices in my life, governor of New Mexico and re-election. I promised to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013. I promise to veto legislation where expenditures exceed revenue. And if everybody, anybody doubts my uh, willingness to veto bills, I think I vetoed more bills than any governor in the history of the United States. I think I vetoed more bills than all the other governors in the country combined. Add to that 
throwing out the entire federal tax system and replacing it with a consumption tax, the fair tax, which would absolutely reboot the American economy because it does away with the corporate tax to create tens of millions of jobs in this country. Governor Johnson, thank you. We'll be coming back to the issue of the economy throughout this debate tonight. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we'll also be checking in with our own Shannon Bream throughout the night to get real-time updates from people watching. Shannon. Hi, Brett. Well, this is the most interactive debate ever, and it's thanks to our partner, Google. You can go to YouTube.com slash Fox News. What happens there is folks can see the debate streaming live, but also to the right of the screen all night long. We are sending out questions so we can get your answers at home, and you can participate and weigh in. Brett, a little bit earlier, asked Governor Romney how he defines rich. It's a question we put to folks out on the Internet as well, and we've got the results. Here's a question. I define rich as someone having an annual income higher than... 100,000, 13% of you weighed in there. 250,000, 22%. 500,000, 22%, and the majority went with $1 million annual income. That defines you as rich, 44% of those who voted. We'll be going through all kinds of polls and data on the commercials. Join us at youtube.com slash Fox News. Brett, back to you. Thanks, Shannon. After the break, we will be tackling foreign policy, government spending. Shannon will have more on that, too, and also the issue of immigration. Now, here for a preview of what's to come, let's take a look at what's called a word cloud. It shows the word words that were used most often in all the questions you asked about immigration. The bigger the word, the more often it was used. The biggest word in this cloud, as you can see, is illegal. Back after a short break. Good evening. I'm Florida Governor Rick Scott. Because of Florida's size and diversity, our state represents the very pulse of our great nation. Not only will Florida be a must-win for a Republican to be our party's nominee, Florida is a must-win on the road to the White House. It is my belief that the next president will be the candidate who both articulates a plan for getting America's economy back on the right track and inspires confidence in the hearts and minds of all Americans. Good luck to all the candidates. This debate is a partnership with Fox News and Google. I thank the men and women of Fox News and Google for choosing Florida, and I thank all of you for being part of this exciting event. Thank you, Governor Scott, and welcome back to Orlando, Florida, and the Republican presidential debate. My colleague Megan Kelly will take us through the next round of questions on government spending and debt. Thanks, Brett. Governor Perry, Governor Romney has been hammering you on your idea of turning Social Security back to the states repeatedly. Can you explain specifically how 50 separate social security systems are supposed to work? Well, let me just say first, for those people that are on social security today, for those people that are approaching social security, they don't have anything in the world to worry about. We have made a solemn oath to the people of this country that that social security program in place today will be there for them. Now, it's not the first time that Mitt's been wrong on some issues before. And the bottom line is, is we never said that we were going to move this back to the states. What we said was we ought to have as one of the options the state employees and the state retirees, they being able to go off of the current system onto one that the states would operate themselves. As a matter of fact, in Massachusetts, his home state, almost 96 percent of the people who are on that program, retirees and state people, are off of the Social Security program. So having that option out there to have the states, Louisiana does it, almost every state has their state employees and the retirees that are options to go off of Social Security. That makes sense. It's an option that we should have. Governor Romney, you're satisfied with that? Uh, well, it's, it's different than what the governor put in his book uh, just, uh, what, six months ago, and what you said on your interview is following the book. So I, I, I don't know. There's a Rick Perry out there that's saying that, that it, it, almost to quote, it says uh, uh, that, that, uh, so, that the federal government shouldn't be in the pension business, that it's unconstitutional, unconstitutional, and it should be returned to the states. So you better find that Rick Perry and get him to stop saying that. Now, <laughs> my, own, my own view is... My own view is that we have to make it very, very clear that Social Security is a responsibility of the federal government, not the state governments. 
that we're going to have one plan and we're going to make sure that it's fiscally sound and stable. And I'm absolutely committed to keeping Social Security working. I put in my book that I wrote a couple of years ago a plan for how we can do that and make, to make sure Social Security is stable, not just for the next 25 years, but for the next 75. Thank you. And I would like to respond to that. Go ahead, Governor Perry. Speaking of books and, and talking about uh, being able to have things in your books and back and forth, and your economic advisor talked about uh, Romney Care and how that was an absolute bust, and it was exactly what Obamacare was all about. As a matter of fact, between books, your hard copy book, you said that it was exactly what the American people needed to have that Romney Care given to them as you had in Massachusetts. Then in your paperback, you took that line out. So speaking of not getting it straight in your book, sir, that would be a good one. Governor Romney? It's kind of bad, man. Governor Perry? <laughs> Governor Perry, we, we were... We were talking about Social Security, but if you want to talk about health care, I'm happy to do that. We are going to I have actually, a round on health I actually wrote my book, and, uh, and in my book I said no such thing. What I said actually, when I put my health care plan together, and I met with the Dan Balls, for instance, of the Washington Post, he said, is this a plan that if you were president you'd put on the nation, have the whole nation adopt it? I said, absolutely not. I said, this is a state plan for a state. It is not a national plan. And, and it's fine for you to, to retreat from your own words in your own book, but please don't try and make me retreat from the words that I wrote in my book. I stand by what I wrote, I believe in what I did, Good. and I believe that the people of this country can read my book and see exactly what it is. Thank you. We, we've got plenty of questions for all the other candidates on here, up here tonight, but I want to, want to stick with you on this one, Governor Romney. Uh, Congresswoman Bachman has said that President Obama has, quote, ushered in socialism during his first term. Governor Perry says that this administration is, quote, hell-bent toward taking America toward a socialist country. When Speaker Gingrich was asked if he believes President Obama is a socialist, he responded, quote, sure, of course he is. <laughs> Do you, Governor Romney? Do you, Governor Romney, believe that President Obama is a socialist? Uh, let me tell you the title that I want to hear said about President Obama, and that is former President Barack Obama. That's the title I want to hear. Now, let me tell you this. What, what President, President Obama is is a big spending liberal, and he takes his political inspiration from Europe and from the socialist Democrats in Europe. Guess what? Europe isn't working in Europe. It's not going to work here. I believe in America. I believe in the opportunity and in the freedom that is American opportunity and freedom. I believe in free enterprise and capitalism. I believe government is too big. It's gone from 27% of our economy in the years of JFK to 37% of our economy. We have to rein in the scale of government or we're not going to be, continue to be a free economy. I love this country. I spent my life in the private sector, not in government. I only spent four years as a governor. I didn't inhale. I'm a business guy. I'm going to get America working again because I believe in the principles that make America the hope of the earth. Thank you. Governor Huntsman, this next one's for you. This week, President Obama proposed a tax hike on millionaires, saying that they need to pay their, quote, fair share. According to an August Gallup poll, 66% of American adults actually believe that a tax hike on the wealthy is a good idea to help tackle our mounting debt. Is there any scenario under which you could side with the 66% of people who believe that it is a good idea to raise taxes on millionaires? We're not going to raise taxes. This is the worst time to be raising taxes, and everybody knows that. We need to grow. We need to be reminded of what Ronald Reagan told us so beautifully, that which is great about America, freedom. We need to reestablish freedom in the marketplace. We need to address our underlying structural problems that we have. And in order to do that, we're going to have to fix our taxes. And we put forward a program endorsed by the Wall Street Journal that phases out for individuals all the loopholes, all the deductions, and creates three rates, 8, 14, 23. 
On the corporate side, it phases out all of the uh, corporate welfare, uh, all of the subsidies, and it gets it from 35 to 25 percent. This is exactly where we need to be. We need to grow. We need to create jobs. Uh, this is not uh, a point in time where we should be raising taxes. We need to fix the underlying structural problems in this economy. And until such time as we do, we're not going to provide the confidence to businesses who are looking to deploy capital in the marketplace and hire people. And that would be serious tax reform like I proposed and like I did in the state of Utah. And that would be, st that would be a structural reform as well, uh, dealing with Dodd-Frank and repealing Obamacare because they are presenting tremendous uncertainty to the marketplace right now.